Today on Earth Focus, a better way to protect coastal resources. Legislative Director of the National Wildlife Federation, Joshua Sachs, discusses their new report, Natural Defenses from Hurricanes and Floods, coming up on Earth Focus. Between 1980 and 1995, there were about 45 disasters that cost more than a billion dollars. In the 15 years after that, the number of disasters that cost more than a billion dollars doubled. The cost is increasing, the problem is increasing, and we need to address it now. In recent years, we're seeing more hurricanes, more wildfires than ever before. It's clear that climate change is exacerbating all of these conditions. Munich Re, an international reinsurance company, estimates that every year internationally we spend about $200 billion on disasters. If we look at a major U.S. disaster, say Hurricane Sandy, we spent over $60 billion just recouping from that disaster, and that doesn't cover all the costs associated with it. More people live on the coasts than ever before. And now that we have more people in harm's way, obviously when a storm does strike, the, the consequences are even more dire. In the United States, the areas that are most at risk are the areas along the Gulf Coast, including Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. And of course, along the Northeast Coast, we're seeing major impacts in places like New York, New Jersey. I think the report National Wildlife Federation recently put out with Allied Worldwide has two key messages. The first message is, this is a very serious problem that needs to be addressed immediately. The second is, there are two ways to address the problem. The traditional approach we often call gray infrastructure. It involves hardened shorelines and levees and bulkheads, things that are static and push the water away. There's another approach that we call green infrastructure. That approach means using the best flood control money can buy, nature. And what we'll do is we'll use natural features to let the storm go where it wants to go. For instance, a healthy functioning floodplain gives floodwaters a place to go and to settle. And the way we, we harness that power is by leaving nature alone and slowing development in those areas. When we do that, not only are we providing this wonderful flood control, but we're providing habitat for animals, for feeding and nesting. We're providing recreational areas for hunters and anglers and birders and hikers. We're providing areas for groundwater to settle and recharge underground aquifers so we have more water supply. So not only do we get the flood control measures that gray infrastructure will give us, we get this array of ancillary benefits. Insurance can cover losses associated with this type of extreme weather, but first we have to make sure people have it, and you'd be surprised at how many people do not have adequate flood insurance. Second, there are some things that are insured and there are some things that aren't. Every policy is different, and to assume that everyone will be made whole after a storm event is a false assumption. We've seen that time and time again with some of these federal disasters. People think they're gonna be covered, or they know the federal government comes in and does disaster aid, but they don't realize that that aid does not cover everything. And people have to understand they really need to step up on their own and take responsibility. They need to be insured, and they need to also take steps to protect themselves. The federal the federal flood insurance program in the United States has often and for a long time given many people insurance at a, at a subsidized rate. That causes several problems. One, it means that in the year of a major storm event, the program runs a deficit and is a drain on the federal treasury. More importantly, it means that we're sending people the wrong signal. When people don't see the true cost of insuring their home, they don't really understand the risk, and they can't make smart decisions about where to live or where to put a business. So while the program was designed to move people away from danger and out of the floodplain by sending a market signal, it's in fact done the exact opposite. And since the National Flood Insurance Program was implemented, we've seen many, many more people move to high-risk flood-prone areas. We need billions of dollars to shore up our coastlines and make America safe for people to live in the face of this extreme weather. What we do know is that spending that money ahead of time will be much cheaper and much better than spending that money after the fact. We need to address this problem as a nation quickly and with seriousness. We need to devote as much resource as possible because this is impacting the lives of the people in our country.
Atlas Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.